Um, so, um, we've been hearing a lot today about digital transformation and uh, uh, where, um, where organisations are and how you can move from one type of architecture to the other and utilise new services. Um, so, you know, we know digital transformation has been around for a while, but as we can see, the, everyone is still at various stages of that. And while the technology uh, and capabilities are moving on, um, you know, it's seems to be getting harder and harder to keep up. Um, so I just want to delve into some of the higher level concepts around where API is fitting in this digital transformation journey. So, uh, APIs. As we've heard, they've been around for a while. Um, you know, I would potentially consider ARPANET the first sort of style of APIs. It was a communication protocol between services. Uh, it was an interface, a contracted interface. So, you know, we've, we've evolved those and uh, Asanka gave a, a, a good timeline for how those uh, interactions and APIs have evolved uh, using different um, protocols, you know, uh, web services, EDI, um, SOA, REST, HTTP, gRPC. Um, you've got tons of um, different ways that uh, systems and services communicate together, uh, and it's all APIs. So they are absolutely everywhere, and it's just getting bigger, you know. Um, all of the systems and services and cloud services we use and consume, um, the way we interact with those services, uh, that's evolved rapidly over the last few years, and a lot of that is to do with making those uh, capabilities. Okay. <laughs> I've got some directions to follow. I'll be back in a minute. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, with the advent of smart devices and sensors, all these uh, capabilities and things are, are, are rapidly growing the API uh, market. So, um, I think these stats might be a little bit old now, but. Uh, at least 25% of the internet's traffic is, is, uh, is, is APIs now. 25% um, uh, of the revenue throws, uh, flows through APIs, and it's growing. I had to put this slide in, because I think we should be running competition about how many times we slowly show this slide in, in WSO2 presentations. <laughs> um, but it does, you know, it's just such a key encapsulation of where we've uh, been and where we're going to and the scale of what's happening. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, and as you've seen and other people have talked about in more detail, so I'm not going to sort of go into it, um, the move to highly distributed systems and architectures, uh, the use of cloud services, the connected devices, all of that just means that you've got more endpoints, which are APIs, more things trying to connect to those endpoints and APIs all the time. Uh, and it's not stopping. So, let's go back to some fundamental concepts. This isn't just about an API gateway. You don't really want to just say, I've got my wonderful uh, business assets, uh, poke a hole through the firewall, and expose that out to the wide world to play with and use. You know, that's um, very dangerous. Uh, and there's a lot of more considerations you want to do that. So, you know, when you talk about API gateways, that's just your policy enforcement point. When you talk about managed APIs and managed API, uh, and API management, you're looking at adding a, doing a lot of value-add services on top of that. So, you know, <coughs> your, your gateway is supported uh, and enforces traffic management policies, uh, performance management, uh, you support analytics, you uh, can do some mediation uh, to sort of make distributed calls to various services uh, you need to monitor. Um, you need to make sure this nice bottom pink one is sorted. Uh, and that can't be uh, pushed enough. Security has to be a first class system in everything you do um, because this world is getting more connected and therefore you know, the potential risks are, are, are increasing. So this is you know, uh, an API in itself is relatively simple. It's a contract. It's just, you know, how do I get that data? How you handle them and manage them in the enterprise isn't quite so simple. So this goes back to the stuff Paul was talking around around. You want to put that level of um, sort of control and governance around them. So if we think about transformation, 
Um, transformation is the eye of beholder. We've heard a couple of stories uh, through some of the other events we've done. There's been more stories about how people have transformed. Uh, there are many different reasons to transform. Uh, there's obviously a general drive to modernise and get rid of legacy, um, but as we've heard and I've experienced personally in my previous role, you don't always get the chance uh, to do that. You know, budgets, uh, just producing a new system that does exactly the same as the old one on new kit doesn't excite anyone. So there's, there's, there's challenging to do that. But some of the other aspects you want to transform around, faster product development and delivery, linking into the agile stuff, uh, transforming your legacy services, increasing your customer reach, new business partnerships, innovations, cost savings, always a huge factor in a lot of organisations. Um, and again, just trying to drive a simple point through, in these, don't forget, it's not just technology. Um, when you're trying to uh, change um, established uh, cultures and processes, that gets really hard. You know, and there are a number of uh, ways to do it and uh, techniques you can employ to try and um, uh, make that as easy and painless for your, your staff, your customers, um, as you can. So, um, I won't dwell on this faster delivery and deployment. Um, so, obviously, you want to take advantage of modern development practices, so agile. Um, you know, that's obviously... The drive there is to be able to meet your customer demands more quickly, deliver stuff your customers actually want. You know, waterfall projects that take 18 months to deliver generally don't deliver what the customer wanted at the beginning. Um, I've personally done that a number of times and uh, sat in a meeting and gone, why did you give me that? And I'm like, uh, because that was spec two years ago and that's what we've been working on. But it doesn't help, you know, it, it's... Uh, We've, we've learned from that and we know that we've got to improve and, you know, that's been a, a cycle through RAD and uh, DSDM and various other uh, iterative uh, deliveries and Agile is becoming sort of the, 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 uh, the term to, to do that quickly uh, iterate. Now, there's obviously uh, um, an option there, you, you learn quicker as well, you know, you learn what your customers like, you work directly with your customers and aspects like that which means that you start delivering value uh, and you start delivering it quicker. Um, I like Paul's two pizza rule. Um, in previous, he's talked about those big American pizzas, um, but I'm pretty sure in my house, even two big American pizzas is just my two teenagers who would easily eat both of them. So I'm not sure they'd be a very good agile team. Uh, we've heard um, DevOps and various flavors, DevSecOps, GitOps. Um, this is about to support those agile teams, and this is sort of shows the ecosystem. Um, you've got to do things uh, in a slightly different way. Uh, you've got to enable those teams to do what they need to do. Um, so you need a, a high level auto automation and frameworks, and you need to allow those ag agile teams to own the life cycle of their products. Yeah? Um, so you need to have those systems ready. You know, in the digital teams uh, in my previous deployment were delivering uh, around 50 updates a week to the production system, doing agile delivery. You know, took a lot of work to get the process and capabilities in place to do that. Um, but you know, the, the the value you can add in that is is uh, is very good. And what we've got to also remember, um, I know uh, Paul briefly touched on it, is even within systems like this, there's APIs everywhere. You know, all of the tooling, all of the um, uh, stuff you need in here has got tons of APIs. So whether you're, if you're working in cloud native platforms and you're using tooling and container orchestration, um, Docker, Kubernetes, running PCF, a uh, whole bunch of tools for monitoring, your pipelines, your Jenkins, all of that stuff generates, um, uh, generates information. All of that stuff is controlled by APIs. So literally APIs are every layer and understanding how they operate, what they do and what you can do with them and what data you can uh, get out of them <coughs> uh, can be uh, be really useful. You know, there's some... Um, it was more in a sort of legacy space, but, you know, has anyone ever thought of analysing the data held within their source code repository on how often bits of code change, which bits of code aren't changing? You know, how many people have touched that bit of code? Are you creating single points of failure? 
So it all hooks into those APIs can surface data that can be used uh, to improve your business. And as been mentioned uh, quite a few times, the distributed architecture, um, I know this is showing the <coughs> a layered approach, not the cell approach, but it demonstrates that as you disaggregate at your edge services or your integration services, you're generating more and more APIs and understanding how they work, how they communicate and controlling those uh, in a larger enterprise is fine. <coughs> if you're a small operation and you've got half a dozen microservices, you know, maybe you need to be a bit pragmatic about how much governance and stuff you put around it. Uh, <coughs> but in that Uber example, uh, if I was the uh, CIO, CTO, uh, I'd be changing my shorts. <laughs> um, transforming legacy services is obviously a, a key aspect for a lot of organisations we work with. Um, I got into various debates around legacy is a negative term and we shouldn't be using it in this you know, PC world, so maybe heritage services might be better, but it makes people that wrote them sound a bit old. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I've still got some code running somewhere. Um, so again, the, the, you know, the, one of the key uh, aspects of, of, of transforming and leveraging uh, your, 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 your assets, uh, if they're legacy and they can't uh, be consumed easily, they <coughs> you can expose those APIs, make it easy to add them, try and maximize the value. You also start to, you know, these are sort of standard SOA principles, really, you're abstracting the complexity from your consumers. You're providing a standardized interface that is easy to use. You also start to uh, reduce that multi-point contact. You know, in legacy systems, you might have five different uh, interfaces which update a certain data set. If you can start to drive everyone through a single interface, um, you can get better control on how that data is managed and uh, updated. So one of the key things here is um, you want to attract and retain more customers. And I know this is sort of giving it a bit of an external view, but you know, you've got to think within internal IT systems, your users, your staff, or your customers to those services as well. And you want to provide uh, the best you can for them. So you've got all these uh, lovely exposed legacy services or new funky ones. <coughs> you've got many different ways of accessing them. Um, and um, you know <coughs> you want to provide more flexible and faster access. So <coughs> APIs allow you to do this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm recovering from a cold, so if I start coughing uncontrollably, I apologise. Um, so you have easy access to the services and data. It's more real time <coughs> updates. You can do it anywhere on mobile devices any time and um, <coughs> uh, with uh, multiple smart devices, TVs, phones, tablets, kettles, fridges, whatever, you know. Um, and you sort of think, you know, compared to <coughs> what, uh, what's, what's possible, was possible uh, not that long ago, I could stand here now, look up my bank balance, I could um, see what my last prescription was from the doctor, um, I could even look up how many times I've been through the Dartford Tunnel this year, which is probably depressing. And <laughs> um, but around this ease of use, it's not just, as I say, it's not just uh, end customers, it's internal staff as well, and it's also people consuming the APIs. So you want to make sure that you've got easy access to design, develop, publish these APIs, and you want that easy discoverability. You want people to be able to try them out, and you want to be able... Uh, to get them to be uh, sort of hooked on, on using your services. So uh, a good example of this sort of API-driven uh, economy is open banking, and so we've got an open banking solution. Um, I'm sure most people are, are familiar with uh, open banking and PSD2. Um, you know, it's been more of a regulatory drive, um, but. I personally trend to tend to look at it as, as an opportunity. You know, the, the, the idea behind it was to open up uh, financial services from banks, create competition, create new products, create new services, deliver better value to the customers, put the ownership of that data back into the customer's hands. You know, it's your data. You know, you can decide how, how it's used. Uh, so this is generating 
uh, a large uh, third-party provider ecosystem, which are all accessing um, the banks, or in a wonderful acronym, ASPSPs, uh, that expose um, the open banking uh, PSD2 APIs. Uh, and these third-party providers are consuming those APIs, consuming them from multiple banks, and growing the ecosystem. There's a few more here, you know. Um, We've got Asto uh, down the side there, who uh, are helping small businesses uh, manage their, um, uh, their their finances and uh, on-the-go receipt capture through mobile devices. Uh, you've got others which give account aggregation. As I say, yeah, also being able to use that aggregated data to provide and offer better services. You know, are you using all your money properly? Are you, have you got your money in the right savings accounts? All of that sort of thing. So it's trying to generate those services. And even more, and there's quite a few out there, and uh, it's going to, you know, really this is the sort of opportunity for people to, 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 to grow uh, the business. And on top of this, there's lots of other initiatives uh, in the world as well, which are helping um, uh, people uh, uh, access financial services. There's a lot of mobile-based banking uh, and payment services in uh, sort of India and Africa and other regions around the world. Uh, and all of that is driven through APIs. All of that needs to have the appropriate level of governance, security, and management around. A um, couple of quick examples of how this, you know, keep it simple. Used to take your camera, go to a shop, Get your photos printed, yay. Holiday snaps to share with your friends. Uh, then you started capturing on your mobile device and you could put them on a USB and um, go to the shop, print them, yay. Again, you share. Um, create an API, directly post, uh, send the photos, get them sent to you. Oh, you don't have to leave your couch, great. Um, then how do you evolve that? Ah, well, actually, I've now got this wonderful API that allows people to print photos. Why not connect to a photo storage service and offer that API to them so that they can offer an enhanced service to their users and you get more revenue and uh, access through that? Seems wonderful. Tickets for cinemas, theatres. Used to have to look it up in the newspaper. I remember doing that. What's on at the Odeon today? Where am I going to go? Um, create an API through the showtimes. Enhance the user experience. Allow them to book tickets as well. Brilliant. Actually, how do you then make differentiate yourself from other uh, competitors? Well, actually, I can then call a different API within my app to go and book a restaurant when I go to the theatre. So you've got an enhanced service here. They're getting more business. You're delivering a, a competitive advantage. Uh, and those are the sort of things you've got to, got to look for. It's about creating those business partnerships, looking to evolve existing ones. Um, and don't try and think, you know, within your own uh, company or system, you know how everyone will use your APIs or use your services or use your data. If you can open that up, uh, even sort of internally, sort of to larger organisations and departments, people will innovate around that. New creative business ideas, that's what you want. Now, some people might recognise this, some people might not. So, you know, uh, using APIs and mobile devices, you can now go and catch Pokemon anywhere in the world. It's brilliant. Um, you know, utilising uh, mapping technology, uh, APIs, GPS APIs, uh, artificial reality views overlaid on that. Um, it's been going a while, it's still quite popular. Anyone still catching Pokemon? Yay! Well done. But as I said, you've got to do this right. Uh, there's a quote from James Cameron uh, that he had T-shirts printed when he um, uh, was doing uh, Avatar. Uh, Hope is not a strategy. Luck is not a factor. Fear is not an option. You can't just say, make it so, and everything happens. Um, you've got a lot of things to consider. You've got to get your strategies right. You've got to facilitate consumption. You've got to engage and empower, evangelise, offer incentives, monetise, govern. And you've got to keep iterating that and doing it and, and looking at all of that data, those APIs that are internal and stuff is, is telling you so that you can make better stuff for your business. 
again, as mentioned, in this, security needs to be a first-class system. So this is an interesting little website. Um, shows data breaches. Uh, so here we are, 2009, 2011, the Sony PSM breach. 2019, ooh, looks a little bit denser, doesn't it? <laughs> um, opening this stuff up, you can't do arbitrarily. You've got to consider your security. You've got to know who's accessing it, why they're accessing it, and control it appropriately. Because uh, there's uh, lots of opportunities to get it wrong if you don't. So as we've uh, been through, we've got uh, capabilities to help uh, deliver this. Our API management solution with our uh, components in the control data management plane, integrations into Istio, Kubernetes, uh, analytics, uh, the marketplace to help generate that collaboration. We've got our sort of full stack and the reference architectures and methodologies that uh, people have uh, been talking to you about. And one thing is, uh, which I think is key from what Asanka said, we can support all the architectures and we can help migrate from one to the other. You know, we can do the microservice stuff and we can support and we can add value and capabilities there. We can support the more traditional stuff. We can do your identity and access management and help with the security. Because, you know, there's very few people that are just here or just there. And most people want to move to some degree. Um, and all of this, it's all connected with APIs. Thank you very much. <laughs>